Hey guys, I've got another First Impressions Linux distribution video for you today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the second and final beta of Ubuntu 16.10, the vanilla sort of plain flagship edition of Ubuntu with the Unity desktop. So I'm going to summarize basically the crux of this review in, in, the, in the beginning section here. This is a, this is a pretty good um, distribution. It's the natural sort of successor to 1604. It's really just sort of 1604 with some more upgrades, with some more newer versions of, of software, um, with some bug fixes, with some tweaks to Unity, all that kind of stuff. But for all intents and purposes, there aren't any massively big changes. So if you are familiar with 1604, you really kind of know what to expect in this release as well. So I don't have too much to say about it, so for this video I'm just going to be sort of exploring the Unity desktop and really just sort of have a look at some of the some of the software selections that they've got and some of the settings and having a look at Unity as a desktop environment because I have not done that in quite some time. So this is going to be a little bit of a rambly uh, review, just having a look at Ubuntu. Uh, I've spent today uh, taking a look at it, um, but it really this is only a first impressions review just to sort of give you an idea about what to expect for the final release, which I believe is coming out 13th of October this year. So this is the Unity desktop. Um, let's go through the settings first because this is uh, this is something that I um, really was was sort of acknowledged is is the lack of customizability sort of the visual customizability settings here. There's appearance and you can go into appearance and it gives you a choice of background. It gives you the chance to change the the launcher size on the left hand side here. It gives you a chance to change the, the theme to radiance, which is like a lighter theme uh, if you if you're into that. I, I don't know how you guys feel about this because this is a subjective element, but I do kind of feel that the ambience and radiance themes are a little bit dated now. It seems that most themes on most modern operating systems are flat themes. This doesn't bother me, but I can see how it might bother some people. It's a little bit of a subjective thing, um, but it does, you know, it, it does have, the, it, it has had the, the same theme for quite some time now, and the uh, how it sort of textures, uh, it, it is very sort of 10 years ago, I guess. It kind of gives that impression, but you know, looks are always kind of secondary when it comes to Linux because not only is this a system that most people sort of choose on its under the hood merits, uh, but also you can customize just about anything, even if it's not necessarily as easy as possible. But it did, uh, and just as a quick side note, there weren't that many uh, good wallpapers out of the box. Um, for some reason, it's something I look at when I look at a distribution just to see what kind of out-of-the-box customization options they give you. They don't give you anything apart from the themes that you see here, and there's a high contrast theme. We can have a look at the high contrast theme. Um, so yeah, the high contrast theme, I mean, it looks pretty ugly, but it's designed to be there for, for people that have accessibility requirements. Um, but it doesn't seem to ch really change that much. It just seems to give you a bit of a garish toolbar more than anything else. Um, all right, well, you know, you get kind of points for effort there, but um, but that's perhaps not the most, um, you know, uh, that doesn't seem to offer too much, that, so that perhaps Radiance doesn't, but... Okay, so yeah, you've got a few... So, there aren't that many customization options. Like, you're basically looking at them. You could auto-hide the launcher. Yeah, see, I don't like this. Now, I don't know if this is because I'm running it in a virtual machine. Hence why you can see some of the artifacting around the mouse there. I'm sorry about that. Um, but it's I've always found that to, to get the auto launcher back out, uh, it requires just a little bit more finagling than I'd like. It's not a smooth, swift out action, um, which is why I would personally not have the auto hide on. What you can do, of course, is you can reduce the size of the launcher to about, or about 30 pixels, maybe. 32, 34... 36. So you can you can uh, you can reduce the amount of real uh, screen real estate that it uses. Also, if you notice, you maximize any window. Um, I'll just pull out Firefox here. Uh, you can see that the toolbar goes into the top of the menu bar right at the top here, giving you a lot of space to work with when, particularly when you're browsing the internet. Um, 
I know that Chrome does this as part of their that you know they they do their own window borders or they have the option to do their own window borders and can save you a little bit of screen space there. But this gives you a full menu at the top here uh, without it actually coming into uh, coming into the desktop. So that's pretty good. Uh, one thing I do notice is that you can't minimize by clicking the icons in the tray here. So I'm clicking the icon in the tray here. I cannot minimize it. I have to sort of minimize it using this button here. Generally not a big issue and possibly something they took out with because people were having uh, you know, user interface issues the other way, but it does seem to. I don't know. I, I maybe it's just an old habit that won't go away. But I do like minimizing windows. It's just you know, put it to the side, think about it next time. There also don't appear to be uh, individual desktops here. I'll, I'm going to be completely honest here. I keep two desktops open, and I very rarely ever even use the second one. So. Um, so I can understand why they do that. There are very few customization options. I like this. I really, really like this. It's a flagship distribution, right? For the ability for, for first-time Linux users to go in and customize the appearance, but without doing anything too much that they wouldn't know how to reverse it, this is about the amount of customization you really want. Like, you don't... You, you need maybe one or two, three themes for, uh, for your GTK apps and for that. You just need a couple of really good-looking themes and I'm guessing that, you know, I'm still going to say Ambience and Radiance are good enough for that. They could be better. You could have Arc, something nice like Arc. If you want something textured, Vertex, that's a good theme. So, but for the most part, just, just the ability to change the background wallpaper is great. I actually have XFCE on my Manjaro Daily Driver, and I've started having getting some wallpapers from wallpapers.net and putting them in a folder and then having that folder be the screen uh, being a slideshow where the backgrounds change every 30 minutes and I actually find that really helps that actually just makes my uh, desktop background just it gives it a little bit more um, of novelty so that it gives me something to look at when when my applications are minimized which is quite nice it's a very small thing and I originally actually brought it in to stop the horror I've, one of my monitors is really old and it's sometimes if you leave like an image on the screen for ages it'll temporarily like burn into the the monitor so having a, a change in it's sort of it's, it's my version of a screensaver basically where it preserves one of my monitors anyway I'm sort of derailing a little bit here I do like the fact that they limit the customization options there is a unity tweak tool in the repositories that you can download and use as I understand it but I'm fine with this really um, I believe at one point there was an option to put the launcher on the bottom In it. Oh, you can enable workspaces. Add the show desktop pipe icon to the launcher. Oh, that's okay. All right, that's good. So you can minimize everything, which is okay. All right, I'll, that's that's. Uh, and you can have the menus always displayed in the top left, or you can have it only displayed on mouse hovering. Do you know what I don't, uh, one of the problems that I do have with this, and maybe this can be better illustrated if I open up files, right? If I wanted to um, go to the menu and I had my little window down here, I'd have to bring my mouse all the way up to the screen and then access the menu up here. Which is, and that now you can customize it, you can change it by putting them in the Windows title. So, for example, you've got you've got your file menu right here now, which is what I would very much prefer, which I which I very much prefer. And again, still saves you on a ton of screen. Well, not a ton of screen real estate, but a decent amount of screen real estate, and also uh, vertical screen real estate, because of course we're all on sixteen by nine or sixteen by ten monitors by now. Um, so, you know, vertical screen real estate is. I mean, I like the wider monitors, but I cannot deny that. Um, it does make sense to, if you know, if to, to put toolbars on the left and right, um, simply because it's it's a, it's a more convenient use of space. Of course, that being said, um, if you have multi monitors that are set up side by side, and you've only got say one menu bar on the left or central monitor, it can require your mouse to move across like quite a lot of screen space in order to get to the nearest menu, which uh, is why I have the one on the top. So anyway, that aside, you can change mouse um, stuff, you can change color um, device color profiles. That's surprisingly useful when color goes wrong. Sometimes if you've got a game or something, if you play games under wine, you'll often 
have like color profiles m mixed up and messed up because running games on wine is complicated and tricky so it is nice to be able to be in control and have a nice little go to there printers is there i i really do wonder the time when when print support will not be included by default in distributions because uh, i i do find myself using a printer less and less and less as the years go by now which is a pain because like i still have problems setting up printers like the like for some reason printers is one of the things that that either we as a society or at least me in my life can't seem to get working out of the box with no problems whatsoever uh maybe i'm just buying the wrong printers maybe i i mean i'm using a printer from from 10 years ago so so maybe i brought that one on myself who knows okay so we can have a look at the system details as well 1610 so I've assigned it all that. That's why I've assigned it. I was type. Um, you can oh the default applications. That's that's again that's another handy one. I don't not entirely sure why they'd go in the systems, but there you go. And then removable media. You can ask what to do when a CD goes in. I know some people that get very irate when CDs auto play and auto start when when inserted. And you can sign into online accounts as well, although apparently that's one of the bugs that they said. So if you want Google or Facebook or Flickr slash Yahoo slash Verizon to follow you around, is, is that. Um, and also, um, I think that's mostly it now, uh, really. Um, I'm just going to finish off by talking a little bit. Um, and here's the uh, the Firefox release that I was just reading. Uh that tells you how to upgrade. There are some new features. Here's the full list of new features. Um, as you can see, it's version upgrade, version upgrade. Oh no, well that's that's changing the provider. Um, version upgrade. Um, additional feature, not a big issue. Um, the you know they're just talking about the the GNOME 3.20 themes uh, update. And then yeah, a little bit of system D. So all of these up updates are, are things that like a, a typical Ubuntu end user would really not be that aware of or would at the very least would, would would expect. The known issues, not that many of them. And all of them, it seems, are expected to be worked out by by release. So it's looking like this is going to be a more stable version of 1604, which we could really use. I I see if I was Ubuntu or Canonical, I would make this a long term support release as well as 1604 if I could do the resources for it because this definitely seems or at least the, the I, a, this could be a long term support release for the desktop version um, because if you can fix that Wi-Fi issue which was embarrassing for them as all hell and they still haven't worked it out on, on many chips um, you know if they can and it's, I think it's just a mis mismatch with versioning so if they did that uh, if they manage to fix that, just make this a long-term support release. Let me just deploy it on people's laptops and then forget about it now because it's going to run out. It's going to run out, uh, it, what has it got, like 16 months of um, support, right? Uh, I don't even think it says on the beta press releases, uh, does it? Um, no, it just gives the release, doesn't it? Just got scanning through it quickly. So basically, yeah, but it's gonna have it's gonna have about sixteen months of support, which is, which means you can basically skip a release of Ubuntu and then install the next one, um, which is I guess doable, um, which is fine. It, you know, it would would have been nice if they could have given it uh, a little bit more support in that direction. Uh, oh, support lifespan. Here we go. And the official the links to the official flavors. Okay. Um, and that's DistroWatch. So, all in all, this does actually look like a pretty solid release. Like I'm never, I've never been a Unity fan, and Unity is kind of uh, the big thing that's that 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 this is this this is this sells itself on, because you can just as easily go to Ubuntu Mate, Ubuntu GNOME, um, Ubuntu uh, Kubuntu, uh, Zubuntu, Lubuntu. The spin-offs are really good. They have been for a while now. But I got to admit, when it comes to a distribution that I I can I can just put onto someone else's laptop, this is a solid contender. Because here's what I I initially didn't like it because there was no easy way to access an application menu, and it dictates your workflow too much. It dictates your workflow because it makes it tells you that you you need to have a keyboard and a mouse. This is a keyboard and mouse workflow, and if you are happy using a keyboard and mouse together in conjunction 
then this is this is a fine user layout interface for you. Um, but that kind of workflow is, I mean, it is facilitated in KDE, it's facilitated in XFCE, it's, 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 it's facilitated just about every Linux distribution, uh, every desktop environment rather, because for most desktop environments, you can push um, Alt and F2, and it'll pull up something similar to this, which is a runner command type of affair, and then you can type something like, um, so if I wanted to type in Firefox, it will give me a list of the, the possible commands there. Uh, you can even do that just by pushing the meta windows control key, uh, not the as in the, um, the command key rather. Um, and then that brings up and you can search for applications there. So if you're looking for, so you can obviously put an un, what seems to be like a, an unlimited number of favorites, uh, favorite applications along the left-hand side here. And it gives you, when you open up this menu for the first time, or well, not for the first time, when you just click the, the Ubuntu logo, this is your most recently used applications. So, uh, if you're looking for recently used applications or applications that you've de designated as favorites, they're all very easy access. It's only applications that you might not use. And I use, I, it's, I prob, I, it would be a very rare occasion for me to have a distribution where I'd use more than 20 applications regularly, 20 programs. But you can have, you can easily have 20 favorites listed on the left hand side here. Is it really that much effort just to push the window button and start typing for, for you know, if I, if I push the Windows button and typed, what if I typed internet? See, it would give me Firefox and, um, and the stop browser. So the search seems to be really good. It seems to be really convenient. Um, and, you know, they dared to break the traditional desktop paradigm, and a lot of people, including myself, did not like that. Uh, and then uh, GNOME followed uh, suit, and they had a very different one, although they had one that was certainly significantly more appeasing to, tr to traditional desktop users. Um, and Unity kind of is trying to do a different thing to, to, to GNOME. GNOME are trying to make a, a desktop environment that fits on every other distribution imaginable, whereas Unity is designed specifically for Ubuntu. And that, I suppose, is the chief issue I have with Unity now. It looks fine. There is actually there is a new feature here which they didn't um, put in the notes from the looks of it. Um, this actually has a, um, a mode which is running in now specifically for virtual machines and low-end hardware that's actually a little bit more snappier and a little bit more stable. And as you may have noticed, um, this does actually react quite nicely. There is a little bit of uh, lag, a little bit of a delay, but that's that comes with the territory with virtual machines. This actually performs a lot better in a virtual machine than previous Ubuntu uh, Unity versions. So, so they get additional marks for that. But my, my big issue with Unity is that it's only designed for the Ubuntu uh, operating system, really. Yes, with some finagling, you can put it into Arch, and I've seen Unity on Arch, but to be honest, if you're going to, to go for a Unity-esque desktop paradigm on a non-Ubuntu uh, uh, system, just go with, with GNOME 3, really. They they have a very similar kind of workflow. This, you know, th th There's not too much in it. A Unity really is just a tweaked uh, GNOME 3 interface with, with, with more, like a skim down, a lighter version of the GNOME 3 interface, really. Um, I can't speak to performance, although they do seem to have actually improved performance for lower-end hardware. But all in all, really quite a good release, really something I'm quite enthusiastic about. Um, and Unity looks a lot better. Like, I would not be embarrassed to show this to people. This might not look like the cutting-edge desktop that Unity looked like when it was initially released, but it looks good enough to work, and it looks easy to use, and it looks... Uh, it looks like what, you know, Linux needs as a, as a flagship distribution on the desktop. So I'm really quite happy with it. Uh, just um, here as well, I've got LibreOffice Writer. This just gives you a bit of an illustration about how LibreOffice Writer looks quite nice and that comes all pre-installed so they decided to bring a libra office i guess with with something like unity uh with ubuntu that would be uh, expected so you can have a look at all of your installed applications it's just it just bundles them into one bloom everything all here that's a lot it's a lot but it comes it comes with the standard offerings so before I go, I just want to show you the software center, which is the GNOME software center, uh, I believe. But they rebranded it to be the Unity software center. So there's that. 
Um, I really like this as well. This is almost up there with the Mate Software Boutique. I like that the Software Boutique in, in Ubuntu Mate gives you a little bit more information on packages. But, you know, this is a good uh, software manager. You can update, of course, the individual applications or update them all. I quite like that. Uh, you can install Synaptic Package Manager, and then it gives you disc description. I like that they've got reviews in there. Now, I can't remember how new this is. Um, it might even be something that was brought in when they stopped using the Unity Software Center and started using the N uh, GNOME one. But you can install that. So there are plenty. So if you look at games, actually, I was looking at games. They give you a lot of games. There's a lot of games. Now, you know, they're all hit and miss. You know, you... In the open source world, you can find a you can find a diamond in the rough, but there is an awful awful lot of rough out there. <laughs> Flight of the Amazon Queen. That's a good point and click game if you're if you're interested in point and click games. Um, oh, Draskula, the Vampire Strikes Back. That's another classic two D point and click. Uh, then I might try out at some point. Beneath the Steel Sky. Oh, Beneath the Steel Sky. Amazing game. Amazing. Another two D point and click. Um, do we have other? We get Steam. That's what I'm looking for. We really ought to be, ought to be able to. Yeah. Um, okay. You might have to get that off the website then, possibly. Right. So we go down. Yeah. It doesn't. I don't. I can't see the Steam store there. Hmm. Uh, maybe it's not in Gitter. Uh, are you sure? Well, fair enough. Okay. So you might have to get Steam from the website, which is, for all intents and purposes, not that difficult. Or actually, you c I'm almost certain, almost certain you could probably find it in the Synaptic Package Manager, I reckon. Um, anyway. I'm going to start wrapping up here, but yeah, there are a lot of games. Uh, the I mean, this is look how easy this is to just navigate though. Firefox, you can launch it. It reminds me a fair bit of the uh, Android Software Center, but uh, but 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 better, less adverts and stuff. So it gives you a solid selection of tools out of the box. If I type in OBS, this is so you got OBS which is a really great piece of software. Version 0.14.2. So you're not going to be getting the latest version that's already currently available on something like Manjaro or Arch, but it's not too far behind on this one. It's uh, it's quite a new addition, but I'm glad that it is available uh, as part of the Ubuntu repositories. Uh, in fact, there are quite a few uh, applications here. It is worth having a browse in the Ubuntu store because there do appear to be a fair number of new, applica uh, new uh, apps in the store as well. They seem to have been making an effort to, to bring in uh, apps uh, faster into the software store. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. This is a really good distribution. I've sort of uh, blathered on quite uh, a lot now uh, at this stage. This video is getting on to be 23 and a half minutes long. So... I gotta say, I usually like the Ubuntu under the hood stuff, and then I sort of ditch the Unity desktop. And I probably would again if I was an Ubuntu user. But if I was just someone that wanted something that would, um, that just just was there, if I, you know, as a default, this is a fine desktop. I wish it was available. I wish now they would make it available on more platforms. That would be what I'd like to see the next step of the Unity desktop. I'd like to see them bug fix for for Arch, bug fix for Fedora, and I'd like to see this as maybe as a skin or a theme available for, for Gnome Shell. But um, they have, you know, they're, they're probably not going to end up doing that. That's probably a little bit of wishful thinking there. But I would, you know, like if something's good, I'd like to see it on more platforms. Maybe it's up to the, the, the specific distro maintainers themselves. And well, I mean, it obviously is. And and they would just prefer to opt in for, for Gnome 3. In fact, you can even make Gnome 3 look nearly exactly like this. Uh, with the, with the exception of the menus, which I uh, the the little in application menus, which I don't like anyway. So, anyway, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. I apologise for this horrible artifacting round the mouse. Uh, this is just some distributions do this on on my VirtualBox install, some don't. It's just 
virtualization, man. Yeah, bugs come up and in all uh, all interesting ways. Also, actually, one other thing about this distribution, which was unique just from from a testing point of view, you may notice that the resolution is you know like high def, as it were, full, full scale. I often need to install a package inside of Ubuntu distributions, Ubuntu based distributions, which allow like special graphical I interaction in in my virtual machine. Otherwise, I'm locked at a um, 1024 by 768 resolution. So when I do, um, when you see reviews in in the old 4.3 aspect ratio, that just means that the virtual machine can't handle doing some more dynamic graphical, you know, jiggery pokery kind of stuff. Uh, but this worked very well with the virtual machine straight out of the box, which to me illustrates that they have been taking care to make sure that this tests well on virtual machines, which again points in their favour. Like the last release was a bit of an embarrassment, but this, again, providing nothing show-stopping comes out, and I've only tested this in a vir virtual machine, but if what I see here is representative of what gets released on October 13th, good stuff, good stuff to come, very excited. So, but it is also quite common for distributions to work better on vir virtual machines than on bare metal hardware, so that's also worth bearing in mind. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.